If you have MS, you've probably heard of the famous Dr. Terry Walls, the internal medicine doctor who claims to have reversed her secondary progressive MS using a modified paleo diet amongst other techniques. In this video, I will review her book, The Walls Protocol. Let's have some fun. I'm Brandon Bieber, and if you're new to this channel, please subscribe for videos about MS every Wednesday. Let's take a look at Dr. Terry Walls and her famous book, The Walls Protocol. A little bit about her background first. Retrospectively, she had some facial pain in the 1980s, which may have been consistent with trigeminal neuralgia and could have been one of her first symptoms of MS, but she did relatively well. She went to medical school and became an internist. But in 2000, she noticed that her leg was dragging and she was diagnosed with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. It was actually noted that the cause of the lesions in her spine was unclear, but a spinal tap showed abnormal oligoclonal bands or abnormal antibodies consistent with multiple sclerosis. She had relapses and was worsening despite traditional therapies, and she started looking for alternatives, and she came across Ashton Embry's multiple sclerosis charity. Ashton's son, Matt, has multiple sclerosis, and they developed a diet, which is now called the Best Bet Diet or the MS Hope Diet. And so she started becoming interested in, in nutrition as a way to treat MS. Interestingly, they make some similar recommendations about diet, but they're not exactly the same. Now, she was a relatively healthy person, Dr. Walls. She was vegetarian, she exercised regularly, but she still became very ill and she was going downhill. So she decided based on her research to quit vegetarianism and adopted a paleo type diet. But despite that, she continued to decline. And now she was diagnosed with secondary progressive MS and she had a slow decline without relapses. She was changed to the medication Tysabri and later to Novantrone or Mitoxantrone, which is a chemotherapy agent that is no longer used to treat MS because it's so toxic, it causes heart failure and promyelocytic leukemia. And later she was changed to a sort of non-traditional agent, Celsep, which is more mild. But she continued to decline slowly. And at her nadir, she was using a tilt recline wheelchair, though she still could walk a little bit, she says. But she was doing research over the years and she was learning more about micronutrients and mitochondrial function. And she believed that several neurodegenerative diseases, not just MS, were related to mitochondrial dysfunction. So around 2007, she changed her diet, she added supplements, and she also incorporated techniques from functional medicine, such as toxin removal, electrical stimulation of the muscles, and she started improving. And around this point, she sort of jump shipped, sort of rejecting traditional medicine and becoming more interested in functional medicine. And she says that she still does prescribe traditional medications, but is much more focused on nutrition and other factors. She was previously taking Provigil for fatigue, but she found that she had too much energy at this point. She had insomnia, so she had to stop it. And then while consulting her doctor, they agreed that she could stop Celsept and she continued to improve. And here's a picture of Dr. Walls in October 2007 in a tilt recline wheelchair and a left ankle foot orthosis. And the next year, you can see that she's riding a, riding a bicycle and she's done well for many years since that time. So what did she do? Well, these are the general principles of the diet. Again, she believed mitochondrial function was very important. So she adopted a very nutrient rich diet to feed the mitochondria, the energy producing organelles within the cell. She also avoided potentially inflammatory foods such as gluten and dairy, and she limited legumes. She actually has a severe egg allergy, so of course she avoided that, though she was avoiding that already. Now, multiple sclerosis is strongly related to Western or developed countries, so she believed that a more ancestral diet, a diet more typical of what our ancestors would have eaten, would be better for the disease. So she focused on things like grass-fed beef, wild caught fish, organic and local foods. She even grew a lot of her own foods and went to local butchers that she knew personally and trusted their quality. She advised avoiding genetically modified organisms. Now, uh, she also believed that sun exposure and vitamin D levels were important, which are known to be related to MS risk. And in certain aspects of her diet, she recommends nutritional ketosis. 
And she also believes that it's important to change the microbiome, the microorganisms within our gastrointestinal tract, which are known to be linked to autoimmune diseases. Now, the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids is known to be linked to cardiovascular risk in Western countries because of a lot of vegetable oils and refined oils. We have very high omega-6 consumption, and she believes in increasing the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids as close to one to one as possible. Now, there are three different diets which are increasingly strict. The least strict is the Walls diet, and then the Walls Paleo, and then the one that she keeps personally, which is the Walls Paleo Plus. And each advance in the diet incorporates the principles from the prior diet. So we'll start with the least strict diet, the Walls diet. The cornerstone of this diet is eating nine cups of fruit and vegetables per day, a prodigious amounts of fruits and vegetables, specifically three cups of diverse leafy greens, three cups of deeply colored vegetables and fruits. Now, this is not potatoes and bananas that are white on the inside or apples. These are things like berries and tomatoes and peppers, things that are colored all the way on the inside, indicative of a high nutrient and antioxidant content. She also recommended three cups of sulfur-rich vegetables, vegetables that have a high content of sulfonamides and other compounds known to be beneficial in many aspects of health, such as broccoli and the cabbage family of vegetables. She advises against dairy and gluten strictly, complete elimination of all dairy and gluten products. And she recommends eating six to 12 ounces a day of grass-fed meats and wild pot fish. And she is against eggs, non-organic soy, high fructose corn syrup, or any kind of refined sugar or refined product, trans fats and vegetable oils or any kind of soda. She's against processed meats such as sausage and salami, preservatives. She also recommends against irradiating food and even using the microwave. And vegetable oil has this property where when you heat it up, it becomes unstable and can turn into trans fats. So she recommends cooking with coconut oil instead of vegetable oil. Now the Walls Paleo takes all of these principles, but advises you to reduce your grains and legumes and potatoes to only two servings per week. So it's becoming a little bit more of a ketogenic diet. The meat should be increased from nine to 21 ounces a day, including 16 ounces of wild caught fish per week. She also recommends adding seaweed and algae, which contains certain types of nutrients that are rare in other foods and are very rich in iodine. And she recommends eating organ meats. In Western culture, we tend to prefer the muscle meats, but the organ meats have certain nutrients in very high concentration, such as B12 and other nutrients. She also recommends fermented foods, pickles, kimchi, kombucha, because of their effect on the gastrointestinal tract and the microbiome, and you should consume these daily. Now, because grains, seeds, and nuts can sometimes have what she calls anti-nutrients, phytates and lectins, which may prevent the absorption of other nutrients, see, she suggests that you soak them prior to consuming them. And she also strongly prefers raw food because cooking can change the nutrient quality of certain types of foods. The final diet, the Walls Paleo Plus. With this diet, we're going full ketosis. You eliminate all grains, legumes, and potatoes. You reduce your meat slightly to six to 12 ounces per day, and you actually decrease your vegetables to six cups instead of nine cups. This is to allow more room for fats, and you reduce your cooked starchy vegetables and fruit, and, but you maintain the leafy greens. And so with that extra space in your stomach, you add coconut oil and coconut milk. And this is a very high fat supplement and it's high in median chain triglycerides, which will allow you to achieve nutritional ketosis despite eating a slightly higher amount of carbohydrates than other fatty acid chains you may consume. And she also recommends intermittent fasting, restricting your eating time such that you're fasting 12 to 16 hours per day. For instance, if you wake up at 8 a.m. and eat breakfast, you would stop eating at 8 p.m. That would be a 12-hour fast. Or you would stop eating at 4 p.m. That would be a 16-hour fast. She also suggests two meals a day instead of three meals a day. And she recommends you actually check your urine ketones to make sure that you're in nutritional ketosis. And if you're not, to tweak your diet until you actually achieve it. And she believes that nutritional ketosis actually has very specific effects that may be beneficial to the nervous system, most studied in the treatment of epilepsy. Now, 
she really focuses on foods to get your micronutrients. But in some cases, she recommends certain supplements that you would perhaps discuss with your doctor or functional medicine doctor. Some of these include vitamin K2, coenzyme Q, various B vitamins. She acknowledges that the Walls Paleo and Walls Paleo Plus are a little bit low in calcium, so you may supplement with that. And also you could consider magnesium, essential fatty acids, vitamin D, algae capsules, certain digestive enzymes depending on your needs and various other supplements uh, in specific circumstances. For instance, uh, NAC may have a role in helping to eliminate toxins. But one thing about this book is she doesn't just stop at diet. She gives a lot of other advice. Perhaps only two thirds of the book is about the Walls diets. She also recommends not stopping your medication initially. She suggests that you try to stabilize your disease first and talk with your provider before considering stopping medications. Although, as I said, she strongly favors functional medicine and really is generally speaking against traditional medicine and ultimately wants you to get off of your medication. She recommends certain types of exercise and stretching, and she's a big proponent of functional electrical stimulation, stimulating the muscles directly with electrodes to target very specific muscles. She gives advice on how to improve your sleep and she gives advice on minimizing toxin exposure. For instance, she recommends against using traditional deodorants because they contain aluminum. And in her story, she even changed her carpeting and her blinds uh, because she thought that they could contain certain types of toxins and recommends more natural fibers. Although she focuses mainly on diet to help the body remove toxins. She talks about stress management and suggests that you keep a detailed diary so you know what your symptoms are and whether or not what you're doing is working. She also talks about a few alternative medicine techniques, although she doesn't really strongly advocate for any specific alternative medicine technique. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And next week, I will publish a video giving my personal opinion from the medical perspective on the Walls Protocol. So please subscribe and ring that bell.